guys. Kind of working for me. All right. So, get this little sip starting out. Uh, if I lost y'all's question, because there's like three or four videos I asked your questions on, I'll catch you on the next one. As always, if you want your questions answered, leave them on this video, and I'll be dumb and ask you to do it on other videos, but leave them on this video. If you want your saddle shed videos, your questions, leave it on this video. So, we'll go from there. Uh, first thing we need to address is coffee pot, the coffee pot gate. Uh, boy, that was, that was terrible. Everyone pissing and moaning because they got a plug-in coffee pot. Which, I knew, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, and yes, a, a little like percolator on top of the stove would be like the best thing ever and make this like the, the ultimate video. Uh, but, Dixie, are you trying to be in the video? Or are you just trying to cuddle up? Uh, it, I just didn't really have time for it to wait and I also use, uh, I use this coffee pot in here and for when we're uh, we're just day working anyway so I actually have two percolators that I was just gonna put on the stove and just pour my other coffee into it so it looked you know super authentic but uh, yeah so that's uh, that's where that's at um, hey hey silly goose just gonna lay there all right. The first one is from Cattle Mine, and it looks like I completely screwed it up and didn't get uh, didn't get it on there because uh, I did this in the most ridiculous way because they were so scattered out. Um, it looks like it printed half his deal. Saddle Shed are some of my favorite episodes. Go lay down. My weird ass dog. Make her go lay down somewhere. So, yeah. Well, got mine. Leave it on. Leave it on the next one. Diesel Fuel 1. He's got quite a few questions in here. Two questions for the next series. Go lay down. Now she's going to go pow. When calves are high, is it easy, easy? Is it easy to overextend, to overspend, and many people did. Or it was easy to ex Now that calf prices have returned to more normal level, what prices do you, practices do you employ to reduce cost? And keep expenditures in check? Uh... Really, a uh, main part of that is making sure that, you know, on the cow side, all the cows, we're getting as many cows as we can, uh, try not to spend, you know, being very mindful what we're spending on feed, especially now, just to be as, as, as cautious as we can. And, uh, you know, there's just, there's not a lot of room for... Not a lot of room for anything. Uh, slowly switching everything over to solar wells. And, you know, going that route. Just really trying to cut a lot of costs. Not really any money in for fences anymore. So we're just kind of utilizing what there is there. Um, we've got to rebuild some pens. So just try to find the cheapest, best pipe that we can. Stuff like that. Um... We don't cut back on on feeding the cattle when they need to be fed, or the quality of it. Uh, just mainly, just just really uh, just try to be more efficient with what we do, and that's we we are always kind of that way anyway. So uh, the biggest problem is if you know we. We didn't have any grass, so we had to buy cows back, 
And when you bought cows back, they're at such high prices, you know, that uh, there's just not any money to do anything with anyway. So I guess really, we kind of, since cattle prices were high, we just haven't had any money to do anything. So whatever we were doing, we're already doing. Do you or have you tried using acid uh, or others to keep bale moisture or to bale at high moisture levels? Um, uh, I haven't. I haven't used any preservatives. Uh, don't necessarily need to. Uh, that's. I don't think it would be bad to have one. Um. Especially like for the custom stuff, just to be throwing preservative in there anyway. Uh, you know, just in case. Who knows? Maybe the moisture comes up, might keep it from, you know, tobacco in or anything like that. But it's it's not something I've I've necessarily messed with. What is your favorite job on the ranch any time of year? I love I love branding kids. That's probably my favorite time of year, especially if it's, um, just depends on when we do it, if we're still getting some, like, showers and stuff that time of year, and it's, you know, sometimes it's just miserably hot, but, like, this past year was nice and cool, um, but, you know, if the grass is green and you're, you're taking cows in and branding calves, and I just, I really enjoy it, um, I probably, it's probably one of the happiest times of year that there is for me. I like Kevin too, you know, I like seeing new Kev. Uh, but that's probably when I'm, I'm so happy it annoys my wife. I, that's, that's how, how happy I am that time of year. Just in such a good mood, just, I'd surf the wall. Um, next person is Garrett Yackley. That's probably his last name. Uh, what type of hay do you grind for the kids in the grow yard? Does it need to run through a conditioner when cut? Um, no, it doesn't have to run through a conditioner when it when you cut the hay. I mean, you, there's a lot of grass hay that doesn't need to be run through a conditioner. Um, you know, that's that's a different deal. That's just dry down. But typically, we feed a, we feed a lot of wheat or triticale hay. And, uh, it's getting kind of toasty. Um, millet, something like that. Uh, I haven't fed alfalfa in a long time because I haven't had any to grow. I haven't grown any. But, I mean, I, and I was feeding a lot of oat hay there for a while, and that, that's phenomenal. I mean, it really is. That's, that's hard to beat. It, oat hay is extremely hard to beat. But, you know, I haven't had, I haven't had that for two years now, any okay, so that's a good deal. Uh, the wheat, the wheat's been doing great. I've been very happy with it. Uh, I think here's diesel fumes, uh, so like, those questions were, were from two months ago, and I mean, that's how long I've been kind of not getting to this thing. Uh, here's another question. Uh, do you feel you can make Better money feeding calves or by running cow calf pairs. Um, I so that, I mean that's that's kind of a difficult question. Um, because it depends if the cows are paid for, you can make more money on the cows, hands down. If your cows aren't paid for, and you have it like then then that's a big expense already, and is your land paid for? Um, so currently, neither my cows nor my land is paid for, so there's not hardly any money in cow calf. There's some, but not much. Um, I'm just in a tough spot on them. Uh, feeding calves, I... I mean, I can do good feeding calves, whether they're mine or anybody else's, because I run, I run my feed yard as a completely separate business, um, even for my own calves. Like, uh, I run it as its own 
little operation and he, you know, I, it sells speed to me or whoever and, and it does pretty good. I mean, the biggest problem you run into with like the feed yard is you run into um, shrinkage on your hay or your silage. And that, that, can, that can cause a problem. So you just have to make sure you account for that. And if you do, then you, you do pretty good. Um, currently with what cows are costing, um, or, and what I'm paying for cows, I could, right now, I could make more money taking in somebody's calves and running through the summer and getting grass leased because um, if I were to do that, and I, I mean, I'd have to, I'd get rid of all my cows if I could to do that. I would take their calves into my grow yard and I would charge them to background them. So you got yardage and you got feed right there. Um, and then I would put them on the grass and uh, you know, guys here, they'll pay someone to come take care of them. Well, I would take care of them, so then I'd get paid to take care of them. And then I'd get paid for the grass. And I'm going to switch up chairs, because I don't want this one to melt. Because it is getting really toasty. Get old faithful out. And, uh, I, right now, currently, with the, with the cattle situation, I think that's the best option. It just makes it makes more sense, but because you don't have your cow payment, which I mean, hell, that that can be anywhere from two hundred to five hundred dollars an animal. Just you know, depends on when you bought them. Um, and then I got land payment, you know. So, uh, you know, right now cows cows aren't a great thing, but I've got them. And I'm on that, I'm on that downhill slope. I really am. I'm, um, I gotta replace a lot of cows, but, uh, I'll get it all worked out. And, but I've been buying land, too. So, you know, that's, if I, if we hadn't been buying any land or anything like that, then I probably wouldn't be having any problems. I'm not, or I probably wouldn't be, you know, having to have such a high input on the cow. Um, but... You know, the only way to keep growing it, I mean, it comes up for sale if you can somehow justify to make it work, then why not? I'm not going to go anywhere, so. Uh, and the other part of that question is, what do you think makes more money when it takes into considering the feed, direct, and overhead expenses to each enterprise depends? Um, well, so... That's kind of, cows don't take a lot of overhead. Uh, you have your wintertime feed, but, you know, that's, the cows, calves need water. You know, they all need water. So you got that, you got your mineral, you know, got your fences. You, you're already going to have that. But, on... For me, personally, uh, I've already got a feed yard, because I built it for when, you know, if the calves are light, I wanted a way to fe uh, feed them to break even or profit. Because after the drought, I saw that, you know, if you're, if you're trying to expand, or you got cows that you can't just sell because you're trying to pay for them, then uh, a light calf it's going to leave you in the hole. But if you got a way to feed them efficiently, then, well, then there you go. Like, you, you're not, it's going to take a lot of money, but you're not, you're not totally in trouble. You might be able to feed yourself out of a bad situation. Um, on the calf side of it, the built a yard anyway, because you got to feed calves if you're going to feed them or precondition them. You got to have pens. So really, uh, I could do it with less equipment than I have. Um, but at the same time, I mean it. Really, it's 
for me, it's it's kind of a uh, I'm already I'm already here, so I it's just I went I went the route to be flexible to have options, and if you wanted to just focus on one thing, then I'm sure there's a lot of things you could cut out. But I wanted I wanted the ability to be extremely flexible with what I had to do, um, just so um, I could uh, on a moment's notice, if I had to do something different, I could. Uh, oh, Nance, uh, Nance Bro 3 or something like that. This is a funny comment. That's the only reason I uh, put it in here. Is how many acres do you graze? How many ca cow calf do you run? And the only reason I put that in here is because Jed Hergenreiter replied to it. And said, remember, that's like asking how much money you have in the bank and how much money you make a year. Because that, I mean, he hit the nail on the head. Uh, if you have no experience in it, yeah, it's, I, I understand the question, but that's, it's exactly, it's like asking me how much money I have, which is very little, but that's still the same thing. I, I get a kick out of it. I, I get those things all the time. So I just stopped ask, uh, answering them. Let somebody else do it. Ken Lucas. Do any of your calves come from Alabama? I haven't bought calves from Alabama in like a year and a half. Um, because I, I had some come out of Florida about a year ago, and that's when everyone was losing just tons and tons of calves, and I bought a load out of Florida, and they were at like 23% death loss on three weight heifers, so I have not bought any cattle anywhere east of the Texas-Louisiana line in about a year. and. The guy from Florida calls me all the time, and I just got, I don't even answer the phone anymore. I don't want to talk to him. I still have some of those damn things. Because, you know, if you, okay, you, you save them. Uh, they didn't, the ones that didn't die, you doctored the hell out of them. So, they're stunted, then we didn't have any grass, and... I'm hoping to get rid of the very last of that horrible, horrible group of calves. And I had calves come out of Texas that were just as bad as those. I'm not knocking Florida calves. Uh, it didn't matter where they came from. They just died that time of year. And everyone was just having heck with them. Um, and I, I should be out of those calves probably about around the first part of March. So that would be a good birthday present just to be rid of that hell hole. Just onward and upward, because that, the past two years, it's just been horrible. Terrible. I have a small herd of 40 beef cows. Most of them are Angus, Santa Gratuitous, Cross. Cool. Cows are a great thing to have. As much as I was just a negative person earlier, I, I, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't go without cows. I'd always have to have some cows. Ben Clark, happy holidays. Most of this was around Christmas, so. As a producer, not a dealer, what do you think about Mix 30? Uh, let's see what the rest of the question is. Do you feed any in trolls or just in ration? I'm no nutritionist, but I think we're lacking energy and trying to research it. Just wanted your thoughts, good or bad. So, I'm a dealer for Mix 30. Uh, I do say good things about them in videos. They don't pay me to. I wish they would pay me to. Uh, which is, I don't know why they don't pay me, but they should pay me. That'd be great. But, um, for cows, uh, for, well, let's go, let's start with calves. Feeding it in the ration, 
I think it's amazing. I probably I wouldn't want a ration without it. Um, you need to be set up to handle it. It is messy. You uh, you're always gonna it's it's gonna get no everywhere no matter what you do. It's always a mess. Um, I've got ten thousand different things going on. I never I never got my tanks set up the way I wanted them to. You got to be able to circulate the stuff. They flat out tell you you got to circulate it. I do circulate it, not as much as I should, and I'm not set up to do it the way I want to do it, but I'm getting better. Um, I would like to think in the next month and a half, I'll finally have all that done, but I got some other projects going on, so it may be in the next six months I'll finally get all that lined out. Uh, if you got stupidly cold winters and you don't have any protein in your grass, I wouldn't feed the 16% protein uh, stuff if your cows are already lacking. Uh, if your cows are in good condition, it's fine. Uh, they came out with a higher protein stuff and that I'm super excited about it. I haven't got to buy a load of it yet. Uh, and that that's one thing. For me, I'm sticking with the I'm sticking with the 16% and 10% fat um, because I want the fat in a ration. It's great feeding to little calves. I don't care about the protein. It's okay, but I want the fat out because that is way way easier for those little calves to convert than like corn is. Um, you really see a pop in those calves and. Just going into like a receiving ration or anything. Um, honestly, I think probably I ought to be feeding more than I am. But it's great. And like Kev's out on grass, if the grass is kind of playing out, it's great for. It's just really, really a good product for Kev's on any type of feed. I think it's just amazing. Um, and I, I fed it for I fed it for some time now, um, and I fed some other liquid feeds. For cows, if all I was doing was feeding cows, um, I wouldn't feed anything. I would feed the highest protein content I could because um, I just I think cows need I think they need the extra energy or the extra protein. I really do. I don't think they get it enough from some things. Oh, somebody walked off with it. Um, I mean that's that's my thoughts on it. I had a, I had a bad experience with some cows that were they were in pretty poor condition, and it 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 was good for the cows. I mean they they did good on it, but. They needed more, and that's, I wasn't feeding them any hay, I was just, we had quite a bit of grass, but it was super washy, uh, I didn't have any protein to it, uh, and they needed more than the 16% stuff, and since then, they have come out with it, they've come out with the higher stuff, I, if I had an extra five or six grand laying around, I'd put in a whole nother set of tanks, and pump system just for cows. I, I would. That's how much I, I really do like this stuff. Um, but I don't have that laying around. And so I am going through enough of it. I'm just sticking with this stuff I have because I want the fat in it. But, you know, if you're looking, if you're looking for something for energy, I think that that's, it's a, it's in a very affordable option. Um, I don't know what... I see what a lot of dealers are charging for it. I see it on Facebook all the time. What dealers are charging. And uh, I can flat out tell you I'm not charging enough for it to the people I'm selling it to. Because they're way, way over what I'm charging. But, you know, they're also the guys who are uh, doing, like pick up loads of it and stuff like that. So, I'm 
a bitch. Get enough of my stuff. It is, uh, and well that's the one thing, I sell it, the people I sell it to, they buy it for cats, they're not buying it for cats, and, uh, but you know, if you're not feeding a lot of it, it, it is an investment to put the, the storage in, it's just like buying overhead cake bins and cake feeders, there's no difference, uh, it just depends on what you want to invest in, and honestly with what range cubes are costing right now. That's outrageous. I I think liquid feed is really the way to go. Because uh, range cubes are really... Uh, I think 20%... I haven't got a quote on range cubes in like a month. month and a half. 20% cubes were 300 a ton delivered. And... I think 28% mix 30 is going to be a little bit less than that. Actually, I know, I know it'll be less than that. It'll be somewhere in there. Um, probably around 275 or something like that. So, um, I don't know for sure. I mean, I'm just, just spitting there. Uh, it, it could be more, but I think that's, I would rather go that way. Okay, and I don't know if I said the guy's name, that was Ben Clark. Uh, Gary West, this is the next one. When a buyer or whoever is putting together groups or loads of calves to keep a uniform group, what weights would you tip? Would you break on typically? I don't do that. I, I don't do that at all. Uh, I buy, mainly what we do is we look at, my buyer sits there and and he looks at, if we know we're going to go to grass, we'll buy anywhere from 400, you know, three 375 to probably 475. Um, we look at price per head. You know, sometimes you can buy five weights for what you can buy four weights for, four and a quarter weights. And that's just a better buy. So what I, I, I don't get real like wound up about they have to be this exact weight, we mainly do price, you know, we, we really look at uh, what what they're going to cost per head to get them, and then once they get out here, um, where they might fit. Like right now, everything's going to be fed. I don't have any, you know, open range for them, so we're, we're really looking at what's going to be fed the easiest. Um, I mean, we've been getting six weights in. And I've been buying five weights, uh, but that's that's a different deal I'm working on. Um, but I've been getting three weights and six weights, and the guy goes and he buys three weights or four weights and and six weights, and and then when they get here, I just I just delineate them into whatever pen I want them to go into, and and I just I group them here then, uh, and I'm going to be doing a lot more of that just once my feed lot kind of clears out a little bit and I have more open pins, I'll just be sorting them, sorting them by their weight that way. And they'll go into that group. I realize there are other factors such as frame size and conditioning also. Seems the ones that get pulled off eating profits or lost. I guess any tips keeping groups uniform? Um, well, it, so, like, where you can run into an issue is, I'm buying enough cattle now, um, I'm mainly looking at where, where they're going to break even, and then what it's going to cost me to feed them. Uh, I'm not, unless I'm going to wheat, or to grass, and I'm buying specifically for that, that's when I'm pretty serious about, okay, they got to be within this 100 pound range, um, but since I don't really have any specific place they're going, then I'm not buying load lots of them. So I don't want, you know, I don't, I don't want just a load of this or just a load of that. Uh, I want what I think is going to make me more money. And, but if you're, 
if you're buying Kez and you're not, you can't buy like hundreds at a time and you're, say you can only buy a semi load at a time or half a semi load, then yeah, I, I would stick to like a 50 pound range. Um, and if you're going to be on that small of a range, you'll see a lot of bargains go through that you'll want to buy, but you really, you need to buy you a real decent group of Kevs. And a lot of times you can do that. Uh, but I'm, I'm not the best person to ask things because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm still figuring it out. I, I can promise you that. Uh, Clint Walton, how do you market your cattle? I was trying to sell a lot of cattle on Superior, but that has not worked at all the past, for some time now. That's just been a joke. Um, uh, and, but a lot of that has to do with what, you know, the basis is currently, or there's a snowstorm, or this, that, and the other, and that, um, that hasn't worked. It works fairly decent when I'm selling my home raised calves, my ranch calves, that works really well. Um, I like, they always do good, but for calves I'm buying and putting together and feeding, I haven't had any luck with it here lately. And that, that's not very fun. Uh, I would, I would prefer to be able to, uh, sell on Superior. Mainly mine go to a, a local sale barn, and they do great there. I mean, they they do better now than they, they have in years. Um, but I'm also getting better at what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, the, the Superior deal, I wish it worked a little bit better, but, you know, you get, they're taking 3%, and it, it really adds up. And... They just, they haven't performed. <coughs> Next one's Joseph Melson. Um, do you still have your goat herd? If so, how's that going currently? No, we don't have uh, our goat herd anymore because my dog loves goats. He thinks that they're quite tasty. So, I sold them to some friends of mine. And... Uh, and they were real, they are my wife's goats, but, you know, my dog, if he did something, and there's, before you already know it, like, nothing's gonna happen to him, like, he's, <laughs> that dog could do about anything, and he would, nothing's gonna happen to him. Uh, so, he, he was way above the goats, and above my wife's chickens. Uh, so... You know, the goats, they would, like, eat wiring on the truck and, you know, or do something like that, but no one would ever do anything about it, so they're always, they're always tearing my crap up, or my dog would massacre a couple of them, and so then I'd be in trouble, so, like, you know, they were just a lose-lose for me, so my friends needed some goats and sold them the goats. And, man, I, my life has been a lot better. Honestly, it really has. I've been in a lot less trouble. It's been pretty good. Uh, do you ever get any cougar predations on your baby kids in your part of New Mexico? No, not where we are. But within 20 miles of us, they have them. Um, we've seen them out in... Like, we've seen them in pastures before. Um... But thankfully, no. Um, but they are around. Uh, and he goes on to say he likes the videos because I don't sugarcoat things. Well, I, I do appreciate you watching. Um, the next one is by Lee Merchant. Um, those bump shawls look really nice, Will. What dimensions are the those? Uh, I think he's talking about those big steel feed chaws. Those are like 20 feet by 30 wide, and I don't remember how deep they are. They're probably there. I think they're like almost two foot deep. They're pretty, or at least 18 deep. Uh, his question is, what's your opinion on retaining fat on calves? 
<coughs> retaining too fat, kids. Uh, so, that's something I'm going to look into is I'm not going to feed Kez to fats. I, that's not going to happen. But I'm going to be looking at taking some of our, uh, some of my feeders that I buy, like good groups of them that I, I know they'll kind of make some money. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing that, partnering with a yard or, or something, just seeing if, seeing if I can pick up a few extra dollars on them. Uh, that's kind of something I'm interested in. Uh, Phil is the next one. What do you mean by Kez getting soggy? You mean fleshy or pot belly? Okay, so this video, it was soggy pins and soggy cattle or something like that. Uh, it was just kind of a catchy little little title. Uh, you will hear people call cattle soggy and they, they're usually when they do that, they're really fat, like super fleshy. Um, I was I was just referring to the fact that you know they were standing in a lot of mud. There's a lot of lot of lot of moisture there. They did did have some fat on them, and they were looking really good. But it was just just kind of a catchy little little title. And I think this is the last question. These are uh, just reprints. Oh, you want some coffee? And this is McFeeders, so he started putting up a few videos. McFeeders Land and Cattle. Uh, is there anything new you would like to try? Crops, equipment, cattle. Uh, there's there's some stuff I would like to try. Uh, I would, you know, like I, I'd like to try sending some of my kids to fats and see how well they do. Go down. And as far as equipment, it never hurts to have a new piece of equipment around. But really, for the feedlot, everything's pretty good. I would like to try uh, like a hay buster, hay grinder with the, the conveyor spout for grinding into the barn. I'm a big fan of the roto grind, but I would like to try that and just see, uh, just see how much, how well that worked. Um, there's always something I'd like to try. Uh, I was thinking about trying crabgrass on some of our irrigated ground uh, for light calves, but I don't know that that's where we're really going to go. Um, Right now, the wheat is just working pretty good for us. I would like something that we could graze in the summertime, but the way we're looking like at that, uh, since we're so limited on water, is you know we'd have to be irrigating, irrigating in the in the summer, and our waters we're just not that efficient with it. Uh, we're in the in the fall and the spring, we can be a lot more efficient with for the water that we put down. Um, I would like, I mean, I'd love to have a new square baler, love to try a new square baler, uh, but I'm afraid if I, if I did that, then I'd want to buy one, and I, I just can't afford one. Uh, oh, tractors are always nice. A new feed truck, I mean, mine's great, but it never hurts to want to, want a new one, uh. Really, my, my hay stuff's pretty good, but I don't know. Like this, I would love to have a wheel loader for the feedlot. That's what I'd really like to have. I'd love to have a wheel loader. Um, I would like to be able to get into backgrounding heifers and selling bread heifers. Um, I've done it. The last time I did it was in, we did it was in 2015. We ended up keeping most of them. Uh, we there we did sell one load in 2015 that uh, that was a that was a mess uh, because they were some calves out of Louisiana and they just weren't feeding well and they had some issues and so we bred them 
because there's no way they were going to make money feeding them. So we bred them because bred heifers were worth a lot and then all of a sudden the cattle market tanked and like we bred them in August. So they weren't going to fit anybody's stuff unless they were like it was kind of a it was a really weird deal. But we bred them and they were like 600 pounds or they were they might have been closer to 700 pounds. I don't think they may have somewhere in that but they bred up they did they bred up fine they did really good um which is very surprising they did very well they were ai but when we we sold them i had a a close really close friend of mine's dad call me up and we had three loads we kept two two loads of really nice heifers and i told them i was like look this these two loads, we're, if they don't bring this much, we're going to keep them. And this third load, we're, we're going to sell them no matter what. And I told them, I was like, I, you know, for you, they're not going to fit anything you want. I wouldn't buy them. Um, his son had seen them in the feed yard, knew all about them. And the guy bought them. And... He bought them, and then all of a sudden he realized, I don't know why he did, but he bought them. Then, he, like, before he ever took delivery on them, he was trying to sell them. So I know he messed up, and he bought them, whether he thought they were the other ones or what. But, uh, and it, it got really, really wild. Like, he showed up, he sorted two of them off. I took them to the sale that day that we shipped them. And when they got to his place, which is about 90 miles from here, uh, then they said that we, we put the other ones back on there and sorted off ones that he didn't want, which is okay. Uh, and what he was trying, he was trying to reject the load is what he was trying to do. And uh, so, yeah, uh, but they never called me and told me anything. They... I didn't know anything about it until about six months later because his son and I were best friends and I hadn't heard a word from him. And, uh, but I, I called him up and he was, he, uh, he never said anything to me. He wasn't, didn't have enough balls to do that. And so I finally heard from some of our friends what actually he was telling everybody. He's running his mouth and I called my superior rep. And I was like, hey, uh, what's going on? Like, this is the first I've heard about it, and it's through, like, fourth party. And he said, oh, yeah, he tried to reject in the load. And I just told him, I guess we're not going to do any business together. Because um, he knew what was going on. And so, yeah, it, hell of a deal. Um, so, I mean, I lost a friend over the deal, but that's, that's on them. Because it was, when you tell somebody, don't buy these heifers, because they're not going to work for you, you're not going to like them, um, like, and then that's what they do, well, okay, that's, that's your business, but don't be a shithead about it, so, yeah, that kind of, that happened there, but, uh, really, the, the main reason I want to get into it is, I'm going to kind of switch up uh, using some of the grass that I have been using for yearlings and start using them for like uh, backgrounded heifers. I, I just think it would be a better deal for me overall. I think it'd be a lot better deal for me. I think it uh, just be more productive on the grass. Um, and the reason why is I've got to start retaining heifers of our own, so I'm gonna just gonna buy my own heifers, and like I would feeder calves, and uh, then do everything I need to, and then just sell them back to myself or the or the partner or the the ranch, sell them back to the ranch uh, at a a very reasonable deal. It's kind of what I'm planning on, but you know, if it doesn't rain, then I'm not gonna be doing anything. So. <clears throat> but that's that's like a couple years down the road. That's 
that's definitely not this year. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing this year, but yeah, as far as as far as new equipment or anything, I just kind of want to just kind of go on with what I'm doing. I think it'll, I think I'll be all right. I got a I bought a bale uh, a bale wagon that goes behind a tractor that picks them up. So I guess that's going to be my my equipment that I try this year. Uh, see how well that I like that. But anyways, that's kind of all the questions I had. We'll uh, see how everything's should be dark by by now outside. But this is a nice chair, and and I do want to say something, Mr. Graham. Uh, we had a, a subscriber send us that. He wrote me a, a very nice letter, and he had a question for it. And I opened that up on Christmas. Uh, that's just the day I, I found it. And I found the letter in there, and I read it, and I put it in a pair of pants that I had, and I have not been able to find the letter since. So, I have not been able to answer your saddle shed question, and I feel very embarrassed by that. But, there we go. It has gotten dark. We got the icicles hanging off. But, yeah. So, we'll leave this there, and we will catch you guys on the next one. So, we will probably get one more done. We'll get one more question done, or one more video, <clears throat> before spring. That's probably all we're going to have time for. And we'll, we'll get one more of these done. So, if you got any questions, as always, leave them on here, and we will catch you.